Bonjour, everybody. My name is Liana May. Today is May 8th, 2012. Uh, a user by the name of Remy Catman 2 requested a tutorial on how to make cutscenes in RPG Maker 2. So, <clears throat> um, we are going to make our very own cutscene, but before we do, I want to talk about a few things about um, the cutscene that you just saw. The first thing I want to talk about is the camera, which I think is the most important thing in a cutscene. <clears throat> the camera movement, uh, specifically, um, something that you should know about RPG Maker 2 is that the camera is always fixed on the main character. Okay, so if you move the main character to the left, for example, the camera is going to move to the left as well. It's always fixed. It's always uh, relative to the coordinates of the main character. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the event placement and show you uh, the scene. This is kind of like behind the scenes of the scene. And... <clears throat> the main character is right where the yellow marker is, right between Little Miss Sunshine and Squidward. So the camera, now let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, I'm using a keyboard, so this is kind of difficult. <laughs> you know, as opposed to a joystick. You're supposed to use the joystick to zoom in, but... Um, <clears throat> So the main character is right here, which means that the camera is focused on that point. And that's kind of like the focal point. The camera is... Well, yeah, I already said it. It's focused on... The, whoops. Got a, a bit of a glitch there. That's okay. And to prove that there really is a character there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the script... This is the script of the of the whole scene that you just saw. This is what it takes to make that what, what 30 second scene. I'm not sure how long it is. <laughs> 30 40 second, I don't know. Um anyways, right here it says party display hide party. And what that does is it makes the main character invisible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment that out so the script ignores that command entirely. And we're going to take a look at that scene. And you can see there's my main character. He's right between Yoko and, and Yomo. <clears throat> I totally just made that name up. I don't know who Yoko is or Yomo or... <sighs> Momo. Momo and Yoko. There you go. Yeah. So, um, as you just saw, the camera was doing three things. It was rotating. That's number one. Number two, it was zooming in. Zooming in. At first, the camera distance is 400, and it zooms in to 100, I think. Also, the third thing that it's doing is it's tilting the angle. It starts out at 45 degree angle, at a, at a 45 degree angle, and then it moves into a 14 degree angle. And it does that through these scripts right here, script 403 and script 402, two, excuse me. <clears throat> these are scripts that I created, and I'm applying these scripts together. And what that does is you can do commands simultaneously. Here, let me exit out of here. Let me go to script 402. This is the script for the camera moving in three totally different directions, rotating, zooming in, and changing the angle. And I have a command called apply together. If I didn't have this apply together command, the camera movements would do each thing separately. So it would rotate first and then zoom in second and then 
uh, change the angle last, which is, you know, I didn't, obviously I didn't want that to happen. I want all three of these things to happen simultaneously. So in order to do that, we have to apply together. And, uh, I'll just, there it is again, just so you, you know. Okay, and uh, another thing is that it's sort of switching between characters. Like, one character talks and then it, the camera changes and it shows the other character. And here's, here's the part where it switches from one character to another character. You can see that the first thing that it does is the screen turns black. Like, completely. In an instant, it just turns black. And the reason why I did that is because the, um, it takes time for the script to translate all these things here. And it could take as long as a fraction of a second for it to completely translate all these things, which is kind of a problem because if it takes a fraction of a second, then you know, the player might be able to see um, glitches. It's kind of hard to explain. I can't really explain it, and I can't really show you it because it happens so fast. It's like it's like a fraction of a second, and you can't... You don't really notice it, but it's there, and it's kind of a problem. If you want it to be a much cleaner cutscene, this is what you have to do. You have to make the screen black. And then, right here, I made the girl completely transparent. And the reason why I did that is because she gets in the way. And I'm going to comment that out so, so you can see what happens when she doesn't become transparent. I'm going to test play that. Oh, wait. Let me do one more thing. Uh, I want to uncomment this. I'm going to hide the party. And let's test play. So there you have it. Um, the guy is talking, but the girl is completely in the way of the camera, and this is a big problem because if you want, you know, some really epic, uh, dramatic uh, cuts in your cutscenes, you really want characters not to be in the way. So in order for characters not to be in the way, you have to make them transparent. So that's kind of like what happens when you have two characters having a conversation back to back. You know, there's like a space between them, like one block of space between them and they're talking. And uh, if you want the camera to switch between them, you have to make the opposite character transparent so they're not in the way of the camera. And the last thing that it does is it rotates the camera well, okay, that's not the last thing that it does, but it, it rotates the camera west. It's facing east, and then it turns west right here, where my cursor is. And then right here, it's the the screen is no longer black because it says transparent transparency 100%, meaning that it's no longer black. I really hope this makes sense. <laughs> um... There's one more thing I want to talk about, about this specific scene that I created. And that is that, uh, you remember that part of the scene where the girl is kind of shuffling her arms, and there's hearts, and there's text at the bottom of the screen? Okay, so those are three completely different things that are happening simultaneously. You have two visual effects, the hearts and the text, and then her arms shuffling would be uh, sort of like an action or a motion, or I'm not really sure what you call it. Let me see if I can find that. Um, oh, here it is. So this is the part where she shuffles her arms, and there's the hearts. And then right here, this is where she says, I'll always love you. And 
all three of these things right here are happening happening simultaneously and how I got that to work was I put a command here that says apply together so it's applying these two things together the shuffling of the arms and the hearts and shockingly enough I left out the text outside of the apply together you can see it says apply in order which means that this right here is not applying together with these two things. I really hope that makes sense. Um, the reason why I did that was because it was a bunch of trial and error and that was the thing that seemed to work the best. Um, let me try to... I wonder what would happen if I put that there. Let me see. It should happen simultaneously. She should shuffle her arms, hearts should be present, or should be displayed, and then text will be displayed at the bottom, all, all at the same time. But if it doesn't happen, then something went wrong. Okay, yeah, see there? Something definitely <laughs> went wrong. Um... That's why I left out the text. So I'm gonna delete uh, what, delete this one right here. This is the text that says, I'll always love you. But for some reason, I don't know why, but it didn't work. It, it's completely baffling. It's, I am awestruck. I, I have no idea why that didn't work. Uh, trial and error seems to be, yeah. I think I've said it enough times for you to understand. Um, okay, now let's, it's time to make a cutscene. So let's go ahead and make a cutscene. The first thing that I'm going to do is go to go to events. I'm completely improvising here. Uh, I, I do have an idea of what I'm going to create. Um, nothing fancy, but I'll try my best to make it look cinematographic. Cinema, ah, uh, cinematographic, cinematographic, cinematographic. Okay, and I'm looking for a bonfire. There it is. Okay, we're gonna come back to this. We're not done. Update data. And I'm gonna make some visual effects, make some fire for the bonfire, so go to visual effects I'm gonna copy double flames which is a preset uh, thing a preset visual effect this is for candles double candles I'm gonna delete this smoke because we only need one and I'm gonna edit this and uh, Let me see. I want to make it look as close to fire as possible. Maybe give it a little bit of... Maybe like negative weight. So that it goes up. Oops. Wait. Uh... And that might that might be too much. Wait. I think I think that's good enough. Uh doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Okay, so now what we want to do is you see that red X right there? We want to put the fire right in the middle of that X. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to try to move this like right in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just as close as you can. And nothing is ever perfect, but, and maybe make the size a bit bigger. I'm not really sure how big it should be. <clears throat> that looks about right. Okay. I could add 
you know, some smoke to the flames, like some gray, black smoke, make it more realistic, but, you know, I think I'm just gonna leave that out. Let's go to scripts. Scripts. Create new data. And we're just gonna call this bonfire. Uh, it's gonna be an action script. And what we're gonna do is go to screen display effects event. This is a visual effect that's going to happen to the event, so flames. And the repeat is going to be set at zero because it's going to repeat infinitely. It's never going to stop. And we're done. Update data and exit. Let's go to events. Go back to the bonfire. And where here where it says motion, we're going to select bonfire. So now the bonfire should have fire. Uh, let's test it out. Let's go to event placement. Preset town. I'm going to place it in the town. And this looks like a good spot for it. Like right about there. That's good. Also, uh, I'm going to go to general settings and go to preset town. Put my character like right on, like right, right on top of the bonfire. <laughs> I know that seems kind of weird, but just bear with me here. Um, let's test play that. Let's see if it, see what it looks like. Okay, it's not bad. I mean, the fire could be a little bit bigger. I think. Uh, actually, that might be. That might be good. That might be a good size for the fire, I don't know. Okay. Now we're gonna create the cinema tagraphic. So go to create new data and I'm gonna make a script called enter map. The first thing that always needs to happen, in my opinion, is that uh, the color of the screen should be black. And the reason why is because you need to set everything up. You need to set the camera up and, you know, all the angles and all that crap and maybe events, certain events that need to be set up if, if need be, you know. Um, transparency is zero times zero. And we're going to copy this and paste it right here. And instead of 0% transparency, it's going to be 100% transparency. Right in the middle, we're going to make the camera um, distance set at... Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. It's going to be set at 400. Why? Because it's a good number, I think. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me at this point. Um, if you want, if you want your um, cutscenes to be more grand, like if you're filming a castle or something, the distance would probably be like 700 or something. But if it's something close up, well, if it's something close up, it would be at 200, maybe 150. But 400 seems to be a good distance. The camera angle, by default, is a 45 degree angle. Um, I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to create a new separate script called cam... Uh, uh, I'm going to call it camera spiral because it's going to spiral First thing that we're going to do is apply together screen display camera this uh, rotate 
And I think by default it's facing no uh, north, and we're gonna rotate it south. Okay, frames, I should probably mention this since this is a tutorial about cinematography. Um, 30 frames is equivalent to one second in RPG Maker 2. Now, that doesn't mean that one... That doesn't mean that 30 frames always equals one second in every instance of everything. Like, um, like in movies, for example, movies that you watch at the theaters, they could be at 30 frames per second, or they could be at 24 frames per second, or they could be at 32 or 36 frames per second. It really depends on what kind of software you, you're using, what you render at. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know these uh, cinematography um, technical terms. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a. I'm not a movie producer, as you could probably tell. So I, I don't really know how um, frame rates are calculated. But all I know is that in RPG Maker 2, 30 frames constitute constitutes one second. So 150 frames would be five seconds. See? Um, the distance, it's, go it's going to zoom in maybe 150, I suppose. And I want the frame to be the same. <laughs> uh, that's not a motto that I have. That's just a coincidence that it rhymed. Um, camera, viewpoint, uh, angle. At, at default, it's 45 degrees, but we want it to move down to about a 15 degree angle. And the frame is going to be uh, 150. <laughs> I almost said it again. I almost said the frame is going to be the same. Okay. We're done creating our camera spiral. So if you can imagine, this is what it's doing. It's rotating. I'm not really sure if it's rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. See, because it starts up north and then it's rotating down south. I'm not really sure how it knows which direction to rotate. You're just going to have to experiment with that. The distance, it's go it's zooming in, so as it's rotating, it's zooming in, and the angle is changing. So if you can imagine that, okay, that's basically what it's doing. Uh, we're going to call that script, so in the enter map script, go to script, call script, and call the script that we crea created called camera spiral. And that should just be about it. Um... Let's go to scripts, events, create new data, and call this enter map. This is going to be a system event, not a normal event, but a system event. And the apply is going to be enter map. Update data and exit. Now let's go to World Organization under Graphics, Preset Town, Script, Enter Map, and right here we're going to apply the system event that we created called Enter Map. So now when we enter the map, the camera is going to start out far and start zooming in and rotating and changing the angle all at the same time simultaneously. And if it doesn't work, then we did something wrong. Let's go back to enter map. There's one more thing I want to do. Right right here, I want to go to party, display party, hide party. So it's making the party invisible because they're not going to be part of the cutscene. They're not part of it, so... When we test play, we should not see the party, and the camera sh should move. There we go. Oh, look at that. That is a nice shot. I like that. So that's how you make cameras, ang camera angles, your, your cinema fabric, 
fabric, cinema fabric kick, tick, and camera angles and such. I haven't slept in a while, so it's kind of hard for me to process all of this. <clears throat> um, what do I want to do next? I'm trying to think. I, I'm I'm like improvising this, so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. I probably should have planned it out better. Um, what I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another event. Why not? And make like a make like a chicken or something. Yeah, chicken. Let's see, there's the chicken. He'll be facing west. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, be creative, you know. I mean, I can't really commentate on everything that I'm doing because, to be quite honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. It, it's all about trial and error. Creating cutscenes in RPG Maker 2 is all about trial and error. I mean, that cutscene that you saw at the beginning of the video, you know how long that took me to make? It took me several hours to make that. Um, and the reason why it took me several hours is because I needed to just, you know, do trial and error. Like, some things worked and some things didn't work. And uh, But it, it all got together in the end, and it looked really nice. <clears throat> So I'm going to have a chicken. The chicken is kind of stupid, so he's going to like, I don't know, um, he's going to walk uh, right into the fire because he's a moron. So let's see if I can uh, direction move. West. Per step. Maybe I'll do five per step. Okay, so I made a script that moves the chicken, and I'm going to go to enter map and I'm going to go to scripts, apply together, and chicken. I don't, I really don't know if this is going to work. Um, I just, I'm just hoping for the best right now. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? I, I, I'm I'm pretty much like a an RPG maker to guru when it comes to certain things, you know, not battles. I'm not very good at battles, but I'm good at everything else. But cutscenes is kind of like a hit and miss. I'm not really good at cutscenes, so I really have no idea. Let's let's find out if this works. Okay, that didn't work. So. Something went wrong. So I'm gonna try this. Try that, and uh, let's see. Okay, that didn't work either. It is possible. It's got to be possible to to move the chicken and move the camera at the same time. But let's see. Let's go to the chicken script and events control change new event chicken. Okay, th let's see if that works. Huh. Not, not moving at all. 
Well, he is moving. I mean, he's breathing. But that's not what I wanted. Huh. Maybe if I put the chicken script in front, like, doing that first... I don't know. Oh yeah, it worked! How did that work? It's freaking bullcrap. <laughs> I tell you, this... I mean, this thing is, like, unpredictable. I have no idea what it's gonna do. Um... Can't... Uh... Okay, he didn't get, he didn't go into the fire just yet, but, uh, let's see. Um, I think, I have an idea. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's, uh, oh, I can't do it. It's grayed out. I was gonna do uh, random, move the chicken in a random direction. Ah, that's okay. It's not a big deal. I'll just, you know, whatever. Effects, and I'm gonna have the chicken like flap its wings when it catches on fire. So, um. Where is that? Motion change. Happy. Speed. Let's see. Wait, what? That's not it. Oh, happy. There we go. He's totally going to freak out. So that's what he's going to do when he catches on fire. I don't know if that's going to work, but let's see. Um, not quite. He was supposed to go on the fire. Oh, the reason why he didn't go on the fire was because I'm on the fire. I'm getting in the way. Okay, this is a common... I'm guessing this is a common mistake because I've done this before. <laughs> Conceded much? Well, I don't know. Um... What I'm going to do is movement bypass objects. And what that does is it makes it so that objects can pass through me. So the chicken should pass through me. Uh, that didn't work. That did not work. Um... I wonder if it if it's me getting in the way or maybe it's the bonfire itself that maybe the chicken just can't go on the bonfire. I don't I don't know. It went over the bonfire that time. That was weird. Okay. Um did you notice that the bonfire was not on fire? Yeah, that's a problem. So what we have to do is we have to manually set that up. Let's go to enter map, events, control, change, new events, bonfire. And then what we want to do is go to screen display, effects, event, bon... Fire. Flames. Okay, this probably isn't going to work because... Um, since it's not applying together, it, it's going to uh, repeat this effect 
over and over again. And, uh, it's kind of hard to explain here. I'll just show you. I can't, I can't process my thoughts. See, it, it's not doing anything because it's going through the, uh, it's going through the effect. So in order to fix this, what we have to do is apply together. And that should do the trick. If we apply together up here, then we probably don't need this one down here. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's see. Yeah, it worked. It's good. Wait, what? What just happened? What happened to the fire? See, it, it starts out as small fire, and then it got larger. How did that happen? I have no idea. No idea what just happened. Okay, the chicken didn't catch fire, so... Um... Let's go to the chicken script. And do that. I don't know if that's going to work. So I'm applying this visual effect flames on the chicken. Uh, let's see. He's on fire! <laughs> okay, he's on fire, but he's not moving. Um, so... I think the reason why he's not moving is because we have to apply together like that. That should do the trick. Let's see. Ah, yeah, perfect. See, now he's going crazy. And what the heck? <laughs> um <laughs> Uh huh. How interesting. Never had never had that happen before. We're just gonna have him move like, like all crazily going in different directions and, you know, whatever. I, I really can't think right now. I'm just so tired. Let's see what, let's see what happens. <clears throat> Perfect. I think that should wrap up my tutorial. I know uh, my uh, when I'm tired, I, I can't process my thoughts, so I do apologize if this seemed kind of boring or maybe um, I don't know my my just my tone of voice is kind of flat and boring. I do apologize for that, but I I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it kind of went far went. Uh, kind of dragged on for 40 minutes. I didn't mean for it to be that long. Um, so my advice to you is to try different things. You'll be surprised what works and what doesn't work. RPG Maker 2 is not very consistent. Um, it's obviously not meant for complex cinematography. So thanks for watching. Bye.